Hello Cancer, welcome to your August 2022 reading. My darling, this reading is very different. If you are a returning subscriber, then I welcome you and I thank you for your love and support for this channel. We have just reached a thousand followers, so I really thank you for that. If you're just stumbling upon this reading for the first time and this is your first time on this channel, then what a beautiful way to initiate your journey with me with us, with this collective. So, my lovely, my sweet Cancer, this reading will resonate with you if you have Cancer Sun or Rising in your natal chart. Usually my readings are for uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, but we're dealing with Shadow Self this time. So, this is a collective reading. You only take what resonates. And before we go any further, I want to light my incense, my Palo Santo incense, and I want to cleanse your space ever so thoroughly. So my love, we're dealing with your shadow side because that's the side, that's the self that essentially, if you don't understand how to navigate through it, because most of us understand our light self, which is our sun sign, our ascendant self, but we don't understand what our shadow self is. So there's going to be a four minute preamble, tutorial, whatever it may you want to call it, right after this introduction. And I want to keep it short and sweet. The reason I have that tutorial so that you understand how the first house, which is yourself, your, your sun self, versus your shadow self, which is ruled by your seventh, your eighth, and the twelfth house. Now, clearly, the idea is not to give you a PhD level understanding of any of this, right? This is a very condensed version of shadow self. My intention today is to figure out what is blocking your 7th, 8th, and 12th house? What is the key catalyst in your shadow self that blocks your manifestation or manifestations, plural, from coming to fruition. It could be about love, it could be about money, it could be about business, home front, doesn't matter. In a collective reading, you set the intention, you let me know how to apply it. Leave it in the comment section how you have applied it. That said, my love, I want you to find, if possible at all, a quiet place or a nook, put on your headphones or AirPods, because I really want you to receive this information in a meditative, if not in a semi-meditative state. Because the whole idea is for you to take this information, not just on your conscious brain level, but I want this reading to sip through your subconscious and your unconscious brain. Because that's where the magic happens, right? So, listen to the four-minute intro, I shouldn't say intro, the tutorial, so that you have a good understanding and a good grasp of what a shadow self is, and then I'll see you on the other side. Changing things up for the month of August 2022. This is going to be a different flavor of reading. August is the month of Leo season as well as Virgo season. It is also the month of summer, and on August 8th, we have the Lionsgate portal. For me, that is one of the biggest portals out there for manifestation. And one of the ways we manifest is by unblocking and unlocking our understanding of our shadow self. As human beings, we exist on this third dimensional plane, otherwise known as planet Earth. And the main purpose and the main lesson of this existence is to balance our dualities and our polarities, balancing between light and shadow. So for this month, the reading will focus on our shadow side. For most of you, you are familiar with your light side, which is your light self ruled by your first house on your natal chart. The shadow self is ruled by the seventh, the eighth, and the 12th house. If you don't know what your natal chart looks like, there are tons of free websites. Just Google natal chart. You would need your birth date, your birth month, the time of your birth, and the city of your birth. 
and the system or the software should be able to produce you a natal chart. Let's take a closer look at light self and shadow self as it relates to different houses. Let's start with your light self, which is ruled by your first house, which is essentially your sun sign. So when you say you're a Taurus or a Virgo or a Capricorn, Gemini, Aquarius, you're essentially referring to your sun sign or your first house. This is how you appear to the world. I'm not saying that's your false self, but it only makes up of 2% of your overall natal chart and your personality, frankly. Let's look at your shadow self. Your shadow self is a combination of your seventh house, your eighth house, and your 12th house in your natal chart. Let's look at these individual houses and what they mean. So the seventh house is ruled by naturally ruled by the sign Libra. It doesn't mean your seventh house is in Libra, and I want to make this absolutely clear. It is naturally, that's the natural ruler of the seventh house is Libra, and the planet is Venus. Now, your seventh house could be anything, any sign, depending on your sun sign. So seventh house is all about marriage, partnership, relationship. It's also about conflict resolution, or how you show up in a conflict, in a relationship dynamic. So that is one third of your shadow self. Now, the next house is the eighth house. The natural ruler of this house is Scorpio. Now, your eighth house could have a completely different sign, but the natural ruler is Scorpio, and the natural planet that rules the eighth house is Pluto. That's the planet of transformation. Whereas the seventh house, Libra, Venus, planet of or the house of balance and stability. Twelfth, eighth house is the house of transformation. This is where you find out things about your relationship with money and abundance, sex, your adaptability, your awareness about yourself and the universe around you. So again, that makes up another one third of your shadow self. And finally, the 12th house, the natural ruler or the natural sign that rules this house is Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune, very watery. This house is all about your imagination, your dreams, your goals. It's also about secrets, clandestine relationship. So these three houses make up your shadow self. So darling, with any collective general tarot reading, especially the ones that we do on YouTube, you only take what resonates. Tarot readings are not meant to be always predictive, although there is an element of prediction, especially when it comes to shadow reading. I'm not reading for your person, although your person may show up in this reading. This is all about you. This is about yourself, your shadow self. Now, shadow readings are meant to be triggering. That's the whole idea. It should trigger. Like as you're listening to me, as you're watching this, whether something I said, something that showed up in, on, on these cards that I'm about to shuffle and take, this should trigger things that you are either consciously or subconsciously hiding in the deeper crevices of your soul. That's what a shadow reading is. And the reason... When shadows are left unhealed and unacknowledged, it literally blocks your manifestation, your success. May that be in love, relationship, business, and so on. So these readings could potentially be very, very triggering, right? That said, I am using two oracle decks and two tarot decks. My main energy, for my main energy, I have already pulled one oracle card for you. And for that, I'm using the Rumi Oracle deck. Rumi is my go-to Oracle deck when I do shadow readings for private clients. If you don't know who Rumi is, then my love, we really need to chat. And perhaps I leave that for another day.
Now, the link to all of these decks that I'm going to use, including the Rumi deck, will be in the description box below, as well as the video. If you are my TikTok or Instagram follower, you know that every month I randomly draw one energy card for each zodiac sign. So that link to that video is also in the description box. Okay, I just needed to get all of those out of the way. So the card you got from the Rumi Oracle deck. Without further ado, is divine content. Discontent. Why did I say divine content? Divine discontent and the number is 12. Number 12 reduces to 3. Because 1 plus 2 is 3. And 3 is the number of divine creation. Those of you who are a bit of a tarot connoisseur, you know that 3 is the divine feminine number, right? So divine discontent. Let's tune in together. Now, if you're a returning subscriber, you know that at this point in time, I do like full on channeling. I'm going to keep my channeling to a minimum today for this particular reading, because the idea is for your spirit guides and spirit to give me information as opposed to me channeling. But when I touch this card, and you know I like to touch my card to get information, it appears to me that you, you are having a bit of a quarrel with the divine because you're not, a, you're not happy, you're unhappy. You're unhappy the way your life panned out so far. And you feel that divine has forgotten you. The universe has forgotten you. That no matter what you do, you never get your intended result. And divine is whispering into your ear today, via me, via yours truly, to ask you some tough question. So I guess divine is showing up for the squirrel. You're not happy, my love. I can see your tears, all these, see your tears, and I can see the silhouette of you in the background. All these gardens that you have cultivated, and, and particularly this, per, this garden that you have cultivated, has never bloomed either because of a drought, because there were not enough water, or because there were too much water. So your garden of Eden never really got a chance to, to bloom. And you're wondering, given that you're Cancer, right? The celestial mother, the zodiac mother, you're ruled by the moon. You are the divine feminine, like literally. So if you are the divine feminine and if you are the heart and soul of creation, then why can't you create your own Garden of Eden? And that's your divine discontent. That's your divine quarrel with the Almighty. And divine is asking you, hang on a child. Hang on a minute there, child. Have you had a chance to ask yourself what shadow of you you haven't faced yet? What is it? What is it about you? What is it about your 7th, 8th, and 12th houses that prevent you from this garden to become a fully blooming, a full blooming garden? What is it? So if you're going to quarrel with me, let's be real with each other. So let's find out, what, find out rather, what is the source of this, this divine discontent? Why are you in this perpetual state of unhappiness? Let's find out. All right, my love. So let's keep my channeling to a minimum. Let's take some cards. I have a huge tripod, so usually I'm sort of, you know, going around the tripod when I'm doing this. Okay. All right, let's start taking some cards, my love. Make yourself comfortable, as comfortable as you can be, and tune in with me. I want you to relax, because the more relaxed you are during any tarot reading, not just this one, the better chances a reader would have 
to bring accurate messaging to you. And one of the reasons I've chosen August for a shadow reading, because August is also the month of Lionsgate portal. And everything that I have, and I will share this personal experience with you, everything that I have achieved in my life as it relates to success, it all happened during my manifestation ritual uh, during line gate or line gate photos, I should say. All right. Spirit, spirit guides and cancer spirit guides. Please give me some cards. Okay. The first card is out. It's a beautiful card. And I get two more because I'm getting one card. So I'm going to take three cards out of each deck. One for your seventh, one for your eighth, and one for your twelfth house. And I'm trying to find out where the blockages are. Look at your first card, my, my love. Your first card is peace. That's on the seventh house, the house of partnership. You want peace and harmony. That means there's a lot of disconnect and discord in your partnership. Whether it's love, business, we'll get to it. And what a shame because you're such a loving, loving sign, right? You're such a generous, such a sweet sign. My mother is a Cancer too, uh, Cancer sun and rising. And I love her to pieces, but she has her shadows, I tell you. All right, this card wanted to come out. Whoa, look at this, death. This doesn't mean literal death. And this, look at the poetic justice. This is falling on your eighth house of transformation. Death, eighth house of, eighth house is literally sex, death, and transformation. And one of my clients once asked me, why is sex with death and transformation? Because these are all primal energies, right? These are energies that are already inherent with us. This, this is not, you know, death is something inevitable that we will all go through in our human experience. Transformation is inevitable. Sex is one of the most potent energy that as humans we can channel. And I'm going to do a reading separate to this about that maybe someday. So the fact is death is falling on the house of death, on the house of transformation. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Answer. answer. Cancer. Why did I say answer? Maybe you're looking for answers. All right, can I get another card for the 12th house, please? Spirit for Cancer, for my lovely Cancer Collective. I have to take my sweet time, my darling, because I want these messages to come directly from Spirit. And I know some of you may get a little impatient, but that's the whole idea. You want your tarot reader to shuffle on camera and to take cards on camera all right my darling look at your 12th house card this is 12th house is the house of the unknown this is the house where you hide this is your your unconscious house right this is the realm where you hide your shame and your secrets and look at this card loneliness so peace death and loneliness and you have a divine quarrel going on so let's find out more. I'm going to take more cards. I'm going to take three more cards and then I'm going to start explaining. And then I'm going to wrap up this reading with some tarot cards. So there's already some messages coming through. I think uh, Spirit has already confirmed some of the things that I've channeled. Okay, how many cards are there? That's too many. I need three. It's too many cards split. Spirit, can I get... Oh, there we go. Three cards. Bam. All right. Okay. So, your cards are financial discipline, physical activity, and relationship change. Look at these numbers. 48. What number did we have here? Three. Okay, hang on. So, we have 48... 
that reduces to 12, which reduces to three. So I already have confirmation. Those of you who are familiar with my style of reading, you know I always look for numbers and confirmation and re repetition of messages. All right. So I will put this, the financial discipline card on top of the eighth house. The reason I'm doing that, because eight, your eighth house also rules your direct relationship with money. So your second house, just so we're clear here, your second house is the house of abundance, love, and so on and so forth. But the eighth house is the shadow aspect of how you relate to money. Are you a saver? Are you a miser? Do you just spend money? So that's why I'm going to, because it's a discipline card, I'm going to put it on top of that. All right. Physical activity and relationship change. Right. This is 56, reduces to 11. This is 67. That's 13, reduces to 4. So I have progression here. 11 is a master number, so I'm not going to. So I'm going to put relationship change on top of the seventh house, because seventh house is literally the house of partnership. And I'm going to put physical activity on top of the 12th house, which is you're feeling lonely. All right, let's break this all down. Wow, this is amazing. Let's do this. So your seventh house, the first card you got. Let's read this together. I hope you can see it. I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. Remember when I was channeling this card and I said to you, spirit really wants you to look at your shadow self. Spirit acknowledge that you are unhappy with the divine plan because it's not happening fast enough or it's not happening in a way that is tangible, that is, you know, visible to you yet. But spirit is asking you, do you understand the only way desires are not becoming an outcome is because your shadow is literally blocking it. So if you're going to be discontent with me, child, you need to take a hard look at your own shadow. And that's what we're doing. So I needed to remind you that you are a being of love, that you, you come from the loving, generous bosom of the universe. You yourself, the cancer is the most loving sign in the zodiac wheel. So the fact that you sometimes forget that you're a being of love and you also need to release negative energy, right? So the peace and the promise and the love that you are seeking from relationships, whether that be a romantic relationship or a business partnership or any other relationship, the fact you are giving away your power to somebody else to stabilize you, to offer you peace and love. Divine is saying, do you understand now why you are unhappy? Because you have given your power up. Seventh house is the house of balance because it's originally and naturally ruled by Libra. Libra is all about balance, scale, right? And you are out of balance and hence your sadness and hence your, your like, why is in my Garden of Eden coming to a full bloom? Because you have given up your power, your understanding that you are a being of love and you have love within you, you need, you, you have no reason and no requirement to go out and seek love from others. You don't need somebody to reciprocate love. You don't need somebody to say to you, I love you, to validate you. There's no need for that. So yes, there could be relationship changes. And I think there's a ton of relationship changes that you've gone through. Right? If you're attracted to this reading, trust me, that's not a coincidence. So if you felt unstable in a partnership, in a marriage, in a relationship, whatever the nature of that relationship is, because you have given authority to somebody else over your peace of mind, and Spirit is saying there's absolutely no requirement for that. 
So the question now is, and we'll get into it in two seconds, because your 12th house is your ring leader when it comes to your shadow self. Uh, during my preamble and my tutorial, we talked about the significance of 7th, 8th, and 12th house. What I didn't say, and I'm going to say this to you, your 12th house is literally the ring leader that feels the, the 7th and the 8th. So what's happening in your 8th house? The card you got, by the way, like I said, the poetic justice, death, the card death falling on the 8th house. This reading, I couldn't have scripted this. So... What am I saying? What am I hearing here? I'm learning that endings are merely new beginnings. That's one of your biggest fear, my darling. So let me read the financial discipline card later. Let me bring this up. If I have to read these two cards in conjunction, I think you have this fear of abandonment. And that's, that could stem from, you know, from a childhood wound, maybe you were abandoned by a caregiver because your sign is such a caregiving sign. The sign of cancer is such a caregiving sign that if you felt abandoned as a child by a caregiver, a parent or whoever, and when I say abandoned, a lot of people misunderstand me. I'm not saying your parent left you at the side of a road or anything like that. You can be abandoned or you can feel abandoned even in a, quote unquote, in a functioning household. It could be something as simple as maybe every time you wanted to show your drawings or your paintings to your parents, they didn't have time for that or they thought it was silly. So emotionally you felt abandoned. So every time there is a relationship change, so you constantly, and now I understand where this is going, you constantly require the other person in that relationship to constantly feed your ego that they're there for you, that they love you, that uh, you know they will be there no matter what. That's that constant, constant validation. So no wonder, because the thing is, if you don't love yourself and if you're not secure in your own self, whoever this other person is, they can say whatever they want until they foam. Uh, you know, they can like, I don't know how to say this. I'm, just give me a second. Let me, let me grab myself. Let me ground myself. They can be foaming at both sides of their mouth and still won't satisfy you, still won't give you the peace because you cannot. My darling, I think you have watched and listened to enough tarot readings to know better. You cannot have another person make you happy. I said the same thing to Gemini. Maybe you're dealing with a Gemini because I mentioned you. I mentioned cancer because the card they got, the Ruby card they got, was Layla and my mom's name is Layla and she's a cancer so I said you know maybe you're dealing with a cancer so I'm saying to you cancer maybe you're dealing with a Gemini the point I'm making is nobody can make you happy so let's come back to the death card and to the financial discipline I think one of the reasons you are so insecure in partnership and, and relationship because some of it ties to financial stability and this will in a collective reading will resonate differently to different people so it's very difficult for me to pinpoint and whether i'm not saying you're destitute but i think growing up okay let me channel for a second i think if you grew up in a very traditional home or household i think you grew up and irrespective of your own gender I think you grew up within a, a marital template where the father went out to earn money, right? The male figure. And I'm again talking about a heterosexual normative here. So the father goes out, the man of the home or the family goes out to earn money and the mother stays home and you know, raises the kids, does household chores. So the mother or the female archetype here is fairly dependent on the male archetype as far as finance is concerned. 
And that's pretty much a typical heterosexual, not does it, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, but in a typical household, I think that is, and especially if you, if you are, if you have been raised by the baby boomers, even if, the generation X, then the chances are the father went out and made and supported, made money and supported a family and the mother stayed home. So you have that fear though, man or woman doesn't matter, but that's the template. If you're a woman, especially watching and listening in, I think you look at relationship and personal relationship for that more from a financial security. And for you, you would rather stay in an unhappy marriage because there is a fear that if you if you were to walk away from that unhappy marriage, then you will not have the same financial backing or the same financial security. Now, if you're a man, the same uh, example applies, but let's flip the scenario a bit. I think you are staying in a marriage, perhaps, because of financial reasons, because you have a house with your partner, you have two kids with your partner, and there's a lot of assets that you share. So I think there's a lot of fear. And so, because I have to read all of these cards together, right? So there's a lot going on with this financial discipline card. And the reason I say this, because one of the reason you're unhappy, one of the reason you're blaming the divine because of your Garden of Eden not coming into full bloom, 12, 3, 12, 3. And part and parcel of it is this. Because your relationship with money, now we are talking eighth house here, right? Your relationship with money is that of a codependent one. Let me say that again. Your relationship with money is that of a codependent one. And what I mean by that is money is a requirement. Absolutely. We live in a capitalist environment, most of us. And for earthly plane to live a sustainable life, yes, we need money. But you have to understand something. There is a vast difference between money, income, and wealth, right? You don't have to be financially rich or financially stable to be emotionally wealthy. Let me say that again, Cancer. You do not have to be financially rich to be emotionally wealthy. And that leads us to our 12th house, which is the ring leader of your shadow self, right? The card that you got is loneliness. I know that I am never alone. Do you? Do you know that, my darling? Do you actually know that you're never alone? That no matter what your perception is of the universe and, and the generous, loving universe and the divine entity and entities perhaps that created you do you truly not understand the divine will never leave your side that the entire design of this supremely intelligent universe listen to me clearly quiet your mind down and listen to me the entire purpose of this supremely intelligent universe is to provide you everything, every freaking thing. I'm not going to curse on this channel, but every effing thing under the sun. That's what this divine creation is about. And you are unhappy because you're like, yeah, all that is good, but I don't see it. You don't see it because you think you're alone in this. You don't see that you are circled. Let's say you are here. See this? Let's take a look at this card. That's the planet Earth. That's where you reside. And you are protected from all angles by your, your creator, by your angels. So you're not 
by yourself in any one of this scenario, right? Even if you take a leap of faith and you say, yeah, okay, I'm fine. I'm probably not going to live in my $10 million home or even my, you know, $2,000 per month rent apartment. I probably would live in a, in a studio apartment. So what? But I will be emotionally fulfilled, right? I will have the peace of mind. So the card that you got, physical activity. Now, this is not about exercise. We're not talking about exercise here. Look at this, six, seven. That's number 13, right? 13 in tarot is the death card. 13 in tarot, I'll see if the death card comes out, but you can Google it. The death card in tarot is 13. 13, when you add it, reduces to 4. So what divine is telling you, and hear me out here, that you are resisting transformation in your 8th house. You're resisting relationship change because of fear, because of fear of loss of, you know, physical, uh, financial stability, perhaps the loss of companionship because you're fearful that you're going to be all by yourself. What's wrong with it? If you don't enjoy your own company, trust me, the rest of it won't matter. If you think that you're a nice person to hang out with, then you should be able to enjoy your own company. So if you're fearful of change, if you're fearful of transformation for all of these reasons, then spirit is saying is, my child, my love, before you pick up a quarrel with me, you need to go through that physical transformation, that activity, which is what we're doing today, is looking at our shadow self and figure out what is it that's blocking all this abundance that I have stored for you in escrow account. What is it that's blocking you from grasping and grabbing everything that I have put away for you to have, for you to enjoy, for you to manifest? That's the question, right? So let's take some tarot cards, my love. And I hope you're still with me. Let's take some tarot cards. This is a beautiful messaging. And I know I said my intention for this reading is only for um, Cancer, Sun, and Ascendant. I have Cancer placement, not in Sun and Ascendant, but boy, oh boy, such a profound message, right? You're taking on the divine, and divine saying, okay, hang on. I see you, I hear you, I take your point. But do you see me? Do you hear me? Do you take my point? Are you ready to go through? So for you to achieve your peace of mind, for you to have the financial stability that you so desperately seek, for you to have a relationship that doesn't go through constant changes, that is reliable, for you to have a home where you're not feeling imprisoned inside your own mind and feeling lonely, are you ready to physically, emotionally, psychologically go through the transformation is what Divine is asking you. Divine is saying, my loving Cancer, my sweet Cancer, are you ready to see your own shadow? All right, Divine, let, let's get some more cards here. The Empress. Do you see it, my love? Again, a number three. Remember when I was channeling, I said, Number three is divine creation. Number three is the freaking empress. Boom. That's confirmation. Let's take some more cards. Let's take at least two more cards. Spirit, I cannot thank you enough on behalf of Cancer because I know the two of you are quarreling right now. But can I get a couple more cards from this tarot deck, please? Oh, beautiful. One more. Spirit, one more. You are truly generous. Cancer, you wait till I show you the second card. One more. That's too many. I need one more. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, Cancer, you got, hang on. You got the Empress, the Seven of Pentacles. I hope you can see it. Empress, Seven of Pentacles, and the Ten of Swords. Because 
the reason you are discontent with the divine is because you're like, I have been waiting. Seven of Pentacles is a patience card, is an investment card, is a card where, you know, somebody's waiting for all of their desires to come true. The Seven of Pentacles is all about a stability of home, of love. And you're saying, I have been waiting, waiting, waiting. This is what I get, divine. Look at the color schemes between these two cards. You're like... I am blue with sadness because every time I put my faith in you, this is what I get. I get stabbed by 10 swords and I can't take this anymore. Even though this is a sword card, 10 of swords, look at the emotional upheaval, right? Look at this wave. And you are a whale of a of a sign, but you can't take this anymore. So divine acknowledges that. Divine's like, look, your patience and your perseverance will not go un unnoticed or unrewarded. And divine's like, but this is how I created you. And you're like, this is the discontent. Because divine's like, this is how I created you the empress, the absolute divine creator of everything. And you're like, but this is how I see myself. This is what I see in my, my tangible 3D world. So let's take a few more cards. These are all confirmation of what we have seen thus far. And clearly this one reading is not gonna fix everything and, and the intention today is to at least, at a minimum, bring up things that are hidden, right? Bring up your shadow sides that you either fail to acknowledge thus far. For some of you, this could be a like a massive epiphany, an aha moment. For some of you, it would be like, yeah, I already, I always knew this, but I, I needed somebody else because you, you'd look for validation from an outside source, and that's one of the shadows of cancer, regardless of your placement. Well, you have the Page of Wands. Hang on. Let me get some more cards for you. What a beautiful reading, though. There's too many cards. Okay, hang on. Go one more shuffle. Divine is asking me to be quiet, get the cards, and then continue with the reading. And I will comply. Wow. 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 Let's see. Mm. Interesting. So this is from a different or uh, tarot deck. It's called John Bauer Tarot. It's one of my favorite, favorite decks. Anyway, so you've got the page of wands, a new beginning. Look, this child, which you are, by the way, how many times I've called you a child? This child with this, there's a siren call. There's a call to divine right? So there is a new beginning. You've got the temperance, which is number 14. So you've got 12, 13, 14 progression. I'm going to get to it in two seconds. You've got number five of swords. So five of swords, 10 of swords. You've got the two of wands. You've got the magician and you've got the devil. All right. Clearly, the devil in this reading. By the way, Gemini also got this card, so you could be dealing with the Gemini. Now, devil is why we are here. Devil is not, I'm not saying devil is your shadow side because that's not a true depiction, but clearly, devil being on the, on the board tells us that we have to acknowledge. We have to acknowledge the devil in us, right? Spirit. You are a child to the spiritual realm, right? You are a, so you are both, so this is the dichotomy. You're both a child and a divine mother. You need to understand that you don't always have to be strong. Even though you have the potential to divinely create your own destiny, you're also the child of the universe. So freely, openly, with the open heart full of gratitude, ask for things. Don't pick up a quarrel. 
with the universe that is so lovingly and willingly opening their their chest of treasure for you. The Seven of Pentacles and the Temperance card, they're both Patience card, they're both Balance card. This is Archangel Michael coming in. So the truth that you've been seeking, this reading is probably the first step towards it. Spirit acknowledges your patience, your sweetness, your dedication. This is a confirmation of that. The Five of Swords and the Ten of Swords, right? You think you're in a no, so Five of Swords is literally a no-win situation. You're saying, yeah, all of that is great, but no matter what I do, I see the Five of Swords. I always wait in the background for my ship to come home. And this is how I feel. I feel attacked. I feel defeated. And this is what Divine is saying to you. Divine is saying with the Two of Wands, because in a, in a typical depiction of the Two of Wands, the individual is holding the globe, the earth, on one of its hands. So you no longer need to wait for your, look at this lady. She's looking over her balcony and waiting for her treasure or whatever, her, you know, spoils to come home. Spirit is saying, don't do that. Study your shadow, study your devil, study your shadow and see what blocks you. Because my darling, I have given you, because you're the divine creator, the magician has all the tools, has all the tools. In a typical depiction of a magician, the magician has this table in front of them. And on that table, they have the wands, the cup, the swords and the pentacles. They have all the tools, all the elements to create their own destiny. Right? So my darling, in summation, Divine acknowledges your sadness. Divine showed up today for you to show you a different perspective of this quarrel. Divine also understand that your discontent is based on the fact that you haven't seen tangible result. But the Divine is asking you, is, gener is, is asking you, is pleading to you through me today that you open your heart, your soul to the divine. And you also go to the depth of your, your unconscious and your subconscious mind to figure out what your shadows are, some of which I've addressed today, right? This is, again, it's like I said to you initially, this is not a PhD on, you're not getting a, you know, a doctorate in shadow self. This reading is probably the first of many readings to come where we're just peeling off, peeling through layers and layers of your shadow. But at least with this particular reading, you now know where some of your shadows are. And if you are afraid of financial stability, if you're afraid of being lonely and that's why you're staying in a relationship, that's why you are afraid of changing the status of a relationship, then Divine is saying, my love, take that leap of faith Take that leap of faith because as the magician and the empress, you have all the elements and the capacity within your little bag because leap of faith is the full card who only jumps into the, you know, into the universe with, a, with, with no possession other than a small bag, like a small satchel or something. And divine is saying that, that, you know, you can take that leap and the divine will provide literally the divine will provide. So some of the signs with the Empress card, I have Taurus on the board. I have Sagittarius on the board. With um, the Magician, I have, again, Gemini. And with the Devil, I have Capricorn. So some of these could be on a natal chart, and that's further confirmation. You could be dealing with any of these signs, either in a romantic relationship or business partnership or in a family dynamic. My darling, let's not quarrel with the divine anymore. Let's acknowledge the fact that everything that happens to us only happen for us, right? We are not here to serve any kind of punishment, right? Earth is meant to be the paradise for us. So this is no, by no means a hell. This is not ruled by the devil. And given that you are the Empress, you are the Divine Feminine Incarnate, 
irrespective of your gender. I want you to take this in, take this to heart. I want you to stop feeling lonely, right? And the next time you feel lonely, come back to this reading, listen to this reading again. And I'm hoping that this will provide you with some solace and wisdom and knowledge to take on the world. With that said, my love, I wish you all the best. I'll see you in the next reading. Until then, take care. Bye now.